Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I.org. Visit our website. We're a house church network. We're all about the discipleship process. You can sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a weekly teaching, usually a couple pages long, uh, that comes out every Friday by email. And it's not on the subject of house church, rarely is, uh, but it, sometimes it's incorporated in there. But it's just a wide range of things, uh, which I believe to be good and balanced teaching, and, and it'll bless you. So go there. It's also in my weekly thoughts and in my monthly newsletter. That's where we put news of meetings, uh, any prophetic words the Lord gives me, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Zoom meetings, conferences, et cetera. So sign up there. Hey, and first, before I start, I want to say hello to Tony and Teresa. Uh, my wife uh, and I, Barbara and I, and two of our granddaughters were in uh, Fort Myers, Florida this past week. Um, nephew's wedding on uh, Saturday and to take some time off and unplug and recharge and see my brothers and my sister, etc. And uh, we just happened to be at the Thomas Edison uh, Museum there in Fort Myers. And Tony and Teresa from Michigan came up and they heard my voice, recognized my voice of all things. It was humbling and uh, a blessing, but so glad that you guys came up and said hello and know that you're uh, watching and listening there in Michigan. So I wanted to say hello to, to Tony and Teresa. Uh, appreciate that. It was great seeing them and glad the Father brought us our paths together. Today, talking about uh, crucifying the flesh, what does it mean? Situation in Matthew chapter 16 Verses uh, 14, 15, Jesus is walking along with his disciples. He returns to uh, Capernaum, I believe. And he says, who do people say that I am? And so the, they, they started spouting off, you know, all the things that people were saying, all the scuttlebutt, all the rumors, all the gossip. And then Peter blurted out, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, in verse 16. And verse 17 said, Peter, you're blessed because flesh and blood didn't show this to you. This wasn't the rumor mill that did this, but my father showed this to you who's in heaven. And upon this rock, that is this Petra is the word Jesus used, a mountain. Upon this mountain, I'm going to build my church. That is the mountain that is Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's how the church is built. He told Peter, he said, you're Petros, you're, you're just Petros, which is a small stone you can pick up and throw uh, quite easily. But Jesus was talking about the Petra, the mountain that he's building his church on. And then he goes on down and he starts to tell the disciples about how he's going to be betrayed and crucified and then be raised from the dead on the third day. And Peter takes him aside and starts to rebuke him and says, Lord, this will not happen to you. And so in Matthew 16, 23, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because you are a, an offense to me. And the reason is you, you uh, in the King James Version, uh, a savor the things of man rather than the things of God. And I, that was a, that's the verse I want to look at right now. Jesus said after that, he said, because you, you savor the things of man rather than the things of God. And he said this, he said, if anybody wants to follow me, you've got to deny yourself and take up the cross. Those two elements, deny yourself and take up your cross. Today, we talk about taking up the cross. People will say something like maybe they've got a chronic health condition. They might say, you know, that's my cross to bear. Or maybe they're caring for an aged parent or relative or something like that, or someone who is disabled or whatever. And they say, this is just my cross to bear, or it goes with the territory, you know, and they, they put it off and say, you know, the image of, of Jesus in Ben-Hur, the movie Ben-Hur carrying the cross up the hill, you know, and, and burdened down by the weight of the wood on his back, you know, as it, it's, you know, and everything. And then it's like, that's what I've got to bear. And that's how it, it's popular, popularly used, or at least back in my day, so to speak, um, my cross to bear. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. Jesus specifically mentions two things that I want to, to, to highlight here. The first one is when, when Peter suggested that he not go to the cross, you've got to realize the Father's plan for Jesus was to go to the cross, to, to be betrayed, to die, to be resurrected uh, on the third day. That was the Father's plan. So Peter's on the other side saying, <clears throat> this shall not happen to you. Now, Peter's perspective is this. The Jewish teaching of the day was that the Messiah was coming and he was coming to kick out the Romans and set up God's kingdom where his law would be over all the nations of the earth. Israel would be the lead nation of the earth, the, the nation that's in covenant with God and spread God's word throughout the whole, the whole world because Messiah was coming to rule and reign from Jerusalem. And they had calculated Daniel 70 weeks, so they knew the time frame. That's why in the Gospels you see people want, run around, are you the Messiah? Are you the Messiah? You know, should we look for somebody else? Are you the Messiah? That was the big question because that was the teaching. They had calculated from Daniel 70 weeks. That was the time frame for Messiah to appear. And he did. 
But it was so pervasive that even in Acts chapter 1, you look at verses, what, 5 through 7, I think it is, and 8, where, where after his resurrection, after he's been with them 40 days, you know, resurrected alive, right before his ascension, the disciples ask him, is it now that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, are you? is it now you're going to kick, kick out the Romans now that you're resurrected and, and set up, you know, God's law over the whole earth? And Jesus told them, it's not for you to know the Father's time and, and uh, seasons, time and seasons that he has held within his own knowledge. Uh, in other words, Jesus sidestepped the, the question and said, no, uh, it's not for you to know this right now. And, and, but it was so pervasive that even after his, his resurrection, they were still asking, are you going to kick the Romans out now? So when Peter comes to Jesus and, you know, Jesus says, I'm going to the cross, I'm going to be raised from the dead, et cetera, et cetera. And Peter says, this will not happen to you. Peter's coming from a very cultural uh, system of beliefs and his head knowledge, everything he's been taught. And so when Jesus says, you are a stumbling block to me, you probably guess that that's the word scandalon. And there's been uh, a lot taught about that word scandalon in the Greek where we get scandal. And, and much has been taught about the element that it was the stick in a trap, uh, in a snare that would trigger the closing of the trap. Think of a bear trap. Think of something like that, trapping an animal, uh, you know, beaver, fox, muskrat, whatever the case is. And, and it's the trigger part of it. And much has been taught about that. But if you go back a, a little further, the original meaning was it was a rock that rose up out of the earth in the middle of a path that would that would cause a, uh, someone walking along the path to stumble. And, and that's actually, if you look at what Jesus said within the context, that's a very appropriate understanding as well. Uh, is that Jesus was saying, I'm walking this path. I'm going to go into Jerusalem. I'm going to be uh, betrayed, crucified, die, raised the third day. And this is the path he's walking. So Peter's suggestion coming up out of his heart, out of the earth, out of the, right in the middle of the path where Jesus is walking, is this rock, this false rock, this stone uh, that would cause Jesus to trip up. And so, um, and, and without going into detail, you'll recall my teaching from Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower. Where in verses 11, 12, and 13, Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable of the sower, you won't understand any parable that I talk about. In the parable, among other things, Jesus identifies the, the earth as the human heart in his parables and the way he talks and, and everything. So when, when Jesus used the word scandal on that Peter's suggestion that he not go to the cross uh, was a scandal on, was, the, was a rock coming up out of the earth, Jesus is creating a word picture that out of Peter's heart is coming this rock, this stumbling stone that would cause Jesus to trip up on his path to the cross. And it's it's also significant because the King James Version says, because you savor not the things of God, but rather you savor the things of men. The word savor is not there in the Greek. It's it's a Greek word. It's, it's a phroneo. It's P-H-R-O-N-E-O. And it's interesting, the commentaries say this is a very difficult word to translate from the Greek into the English because it has to do with the visceral and the cognitive. In other words, it has to do with, it actually means the diaphragm. It has to do with the emotions and the feelings and the strong passion that a person can feel along with what they've been taught or what they are thinking. So Jesus is saying that Peter's thinking, the things which he feels in his gut and the things which he's been taught, are a stumbling block in the pathway coming up out of his heart. It's a stumbling block for Jesus to trip over. And so denying yourself, Jesus immediately after that says, you must deny yourself if you're going to follow me and pick up your cross. That is crucify uh, those things, the, the visceral and the cognitive that are contrary to God's will in your life. So what we're looking at is that Christ in us is taking along us along a path. The Father through Christ in us is taking along a particular, taking us along a path. And denying ourselves and crucifying what we feel that is in our emotions, our passion, uh, get our emotions riled up at an offense or something we don't agree with, and our cognitive. Uh, that's the word for now, the things that which you like, the things which you're thinking about. They're visceral and they're cognitive. And he says, they're contrary to the Father's path for me. So what we have to ask ourselves is this, is what I feel and what I think along the path of where the Father wants me to go? Or are the things rising up out of my heart, the human, the earth, rising up out of the heart, a stumbling block, a stone rising up that will trip me up on the path and the path that Christ has for me to walk. 
And so what Jesus is actually talking here is a much stronger word picture than just the cross. He's telling Peter, he said, these emotions, the things that you feel, the things that you've been taught that you're thinking about me not going to the cross, you've got to deny those. That means you've got to put them, there's no way around it. You, they're not just going to be rebuked and sail away. These are things within you that you have to deal with. And these are the way you think. And, and Jesus says, you've got to take stock of where the Father is leading you and then if any emotions, visceral, again, phroneo, from the visceral and the cognitive, if anything rises up out of your heart that would trip you up along the Father's path, then you have to deny it and crucify it. Deny it doesn't mean uh, deny that it's there. It, rather, it means to deny it access, to deny it to manifest, to deny its urge to blurt out, cut off a relationship, be in bitterness, unforgiveness, wrestle with it. You've got to deny its efforts in your life to rise up out of the path, out of your heart to cause a stumbling block for yourself and for what Christ is trying to do in you. Um, and so that is the real crucifying of the flesh. That is what he's really talking about. It has to do with our thought life, what we feel, our passion, what we think is right, what we don't think is right, opinions, et cetera, et cetera. And so, and so that's what Jesus was talking about. So again, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, my father's shown this to you, Peter. <laughs> you, th this confession, this revelation that Jesus is the Christ, that is how I'm building my church. But guys, listen, I, to do that, I've got to go to the cross. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to die. I'm going to be raised the third day. And Peter pulls him aside. No, this cannot happen to you. This is all wrong. This is not what I've been taught. This is not what I feel. He's passionate about it. And Jesus rebukes him, recognizing that what what he's thinking and what he's feeling is from Satan. And that's what we have to do. When we think and we feel something contrary to scripture, contrary to love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, patience, meekness, kindness, the fruit of the spirit, contrary to adding to our faith, moral excellence and knowledge and self-control and denying the flesh and consistency, you know, and godliness and brotherly love and agape love. So if, when things rise up that are contrary to those things, we, we kill them. We kill them off. We change our thinking. We change our feeling. Make your feelings subject to, to the scripture of what you know to do is right. Your feelings should not lead you. You should lead your feelings. You should tell your body how it feels. You should tell your emotions how you feel about it based on scripture. It doesn't matter whether you feel it, that you're saved today or not. Scripture says you are because you believe in Jesus. He, you know that Christ lives in you. You know that God's active in your life. And you put the emotions that are contrary down. Same way with anything else, offense or anything else. So anyway, I've gone on a little bit long here, but I wanted to, to hope that's a blessing to you and to, to share that with you. All right. God bless. Talk to you later. C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G.